everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Rusta reveal. We are officially back. This is my first Rasta reveal, being back at work. First of all, before I start, apologies for the surround sound. I'm hoping my microphone's going to be okay, but there's roadworks going on outside. My sister's rehearsing for something downstairs, so there's music playing. So if there's a lot of noise going on in the background, I apologise in advance. And apologies for my nails. I've been back at work for two days, and I've already got bruises all the way up my arm and lost a nail. It's tough work, this cabin crew business. One last apology from me is the lighting. It is so sunny outside, but it's also very cloudy, meaning the sun is like in, out, in, out shake it all about. So I've had to sit here today but the lighting in my room is shocking so I've opened the curtains a little bit so you might get like the odd glare of sunlight every now and then. Hopefully it won't be too bad but the only plan I had for today was to do this video so we're doing it. So I'm officially in my first month back at work so today I'm doing April's rust reveal. We are already halfway through the month. Usually I do my rust reveals on the first of every month so expect them on the first of every month going forward. However for this month because I I'm only just starting up again. I didn't get my roster until maybe the 5th or something of April. So I wasn't able to give it to you on the 1st of April. So I asked you guys over on my Instagram if you guys wanted a little mini version. And you said yes. So that is what we're doing. So with these roster reveals, I usually start off by going back to the month previous and telling you anything that's changed, anything worth reporting basically and obviously as it's my first roster back I have nothing to say about last month because I didn't do anything last month. Then I usually go through and tell you what my bids were and if you are new around here or if you're new to Cabin Crew Life videos then with the airline that I work for we have an opportunity to basically what they call bid for flights and it's basically like the equivalent of going in to your manager and saying oh can I please have this or can I have this day off and things like that. But obviously, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people. So it has to be done on a little computer system. Sometimes it's on our side, sometimes it's not. However, nothing to report on for this month because I was still not back at work in March, which meant I missed the bidding window. So the first time I'm able to actually bid for anything will be May's roster. So look forward to that. So nothing to report on from last month, no bids. I'm going to give you a little roundup of what April has and will look like as we're halfway through. So cracking on with the roster. Whilst I do this as well, I thought I'd take the opportunity to share with you sort of like what my training was like, what my first flight was like and things like that. So expect that in this video. But the first thing I did in April was my training. I had three days of training and it worked out really, really well. If you saw my last video, then you'll know I was wondering if they were gonna give me any training at all. But I basically got my recurrent training, which was due anyway. So I sort of killed two birds, one stone, which worked out really, really well for me. And I also knew what to expect from this training course because it's the recurrent training course that you do every single year. Yeah, it was good. It wasn't too bad. I had three days of training. First day was at home, which was quite overwhelming because there was a lot of stuff to do, but I kind of split it over two days so that I can take my time. A lot of the information just sort of came flooding back to me, which was nice. And I felt really prepared, ready for day two. Day two, we had lots of exams. The first thing we did was all of our aircraft specific exams and I'm on four different aircraft types. So four different exams, very similar, but all different information to learn and remember which was quite tough but it was okay it was all good then we carried on with the rest of the stuff we did like our medical training so our avmed training we did security training and then we also had to take exams on avmed and security so that was another two exams that day six exams on that first day we also looked at some of the equipment just as a refresher when i first turned up i felt very very overwhelmed sat in the car was very very nervous and when i got in i sort of kept myself to myself i wasn't really talking to anyone which isn't really like me i do sort of chat at. not because I would say I'm an extrovert but because I feel more uncomfortable if I don't talk to people so normally I do but yeah I sort of kept myself to myself and only really spoke when spoken to that first day and then like towards the end I sort of got more comfortable everything was feeling a bit more normal um everyone that I was training with was really lovely as well so that was fine so that was a good first day in the training center it was really quite scary to go into the global learning academy actually but it was a really good day and then the day two was more intense we had our fire training that day we had to do all of our door training so just show that we can open and close and disarm and arm all the doors and our emergency procedures procedures as well that was all very intense we had this one section which was our crm training which is usually a very mellow quite tiring session where we just 
sit and listen. You go over sort of other things that have happened in the past with emergency procedures and how important the communication is between flight crew and cabin crew and everything like that and how it can really change an emergency evacuation and things like that. And it's usually a very boring, mellow session and people often find that they get quite tired and they fall asleep because it is so draining but it's a really important section so this year they really did spice things up a little bit we did a basically like a practice emergency evacuation so four crew were like volunteered to go up and do it thankfully it wasn't me because i probably would have had a meltdown but we all had to go in and be passengers and i felt really awful because i'd been given this slip of paper that basically said i had to pretend that i was wheelchair assisted and refuse to move in case of an evacuation without my wheelchair basically and I felt awful. Four crew members just got thrown on the spot and it was, uh, oh, it was so hard. They had a fire going on at the back of the cabin, a fire at the front of the cabin. And then all of this is fake, by the way, obviously. And then it turns out that we had to do an emergency land and evacuation. So they had to remember all of this stuff to do that. And we all had to, we kept getting told by the trainers to just keep acting like passengers would act. And even the trainers were like shouting out things and telling us to do things like basically really act as if you were a passenger and your plane was crashing almost. It would be an absolute uproar. So it would be crazy. So we were all screaming and shouting and oh, like I felt so, so bad. And then when they finally evacuated the aircraft, there was just me sat there like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm sorry. I refuse to move without my wheelchair. Like I put my best acting head on and I was just playing the part and I felt awful and yeah it was just so intense and I'm just so glad that it wasn't me and we gave them all such a big cuddle afterwards because even though it's not real and you're acting adrenaline really does kick in and you have to just pretend that it's really happening and it's scary like we're trained to do this stuff but it's scary even when it's fake it's so intense and like even now like my heart's like whoo just thinking about it so i can't even imagine how they were feeling it was just crazy so that was a very intense second day um but we got through it and we did one more general exam at the end which is sort of 10 questions just based on anything and everything and i passed all of my exams you'll be happy to know on day one and on day two so really happy with that we also had to do a practical for the medical examination as well so we had to show that we could do cpr effectively rescue breaths all of that so yeah that sounds like a lot of information it's because it is <laughs> it was very intense training this year actually last year it was two days this year it was three days there was a lot more information a lot more to practice which is good it works a lot better as a training course but it was a lot I really did think that that CRM section was a lot for a recurrent training. It felt even more intense than my new entrant training, which was a lot. But anyway, training was complete. That was my first three days and I passed. It was good. I'm glad to not have to do it for another year. <laughs> and then the flight started. So I had a nice little three days off, I think, after that training or something. And then it was ready for my first flight. I had a block of two nicely together. So my first flight was a Corfu there and back and then my second day was an available day but it turned into an Athens there and back which is slightly longer than the Corfu both very long days both very busy flights but I will tell you a little bit about how my first flight experience went let's start with the night before I did have a meltdown I don't know if I've ever really mentioned it obviously when I had my time off but the issue for me was that I was always having panic attacks the night before a flight I still haven't got down to the reasons as to why I'm just better at controlling it now and I didn't know if it was gonna happen and it did happen thankfully Ryan my boyfriend was there and he was very helpful yeah I did have a meltdown I did however the next morning I was completely fine. Like, I did feel, obviously, a little bit of natural nerves, but you'd think I'd have a panic attack on the day, but I wasn't. I was having a panic attack the day before. But, yeah, on the day, I think I turned up to the car park and I was a little bit nervous. Obviously, it was a long day, so it was a really early start and a really late finish. I felt quite prepared. I literally just took my handbag with me, so I didn't have any suitcases or anything to worry about. When I got into the briefing room, everyone was really lovely, so automatically, my nerves went from here to here. That's another bruise. And then I was very nervously waiting to find out what position I was going to be. My original aircraft was a Airbus 321neo. When I got there, it ended up being an Airbus 320neo. So for a 321neo, you need a minimum of five crew. And then sometimes six is carried when you have a really busy cabin, basically. And then for a 320neo, the minimum crew you have to have is four. And then five is carried 
if you have a busy cabin. So there were six of us scheduled for this flight because it was going to be really busy and it was on a 321. I got there and I knew I was already last to pick for my positions. So I was initially quite nervous. All your positions make a difference to how busy you are, if you're in charge of a door, if you have extra responsibilities. So I basically, for my first flight, wanted to get the position that had the least to think about because I was already freaking out, basically. But because I knew I was last to pick, I was like, I'm going to get left with the one that nobody wants, so I'm probably going to get the worst one. However, when we got there, like I said, the aircraft changed, and I knew that with it being a 321 to a 320, I knew that not as many crew were needed, and yet there were six of us here. So because I was last to pick, I ended up getting the last position, which ended up be in position six and there isn't meant to be six crew on this flight meaning there's only five jump seats for crew so I didn't have a seat which meant I got to sit in the flight deck which was really really fun and I was basically like the floater like I was just the extra pair of hands so if a certain cabin was more busy than the other, then that's where I would be. But my seat was in the flight deck, like, the whole day, which was really nice. Landing into Corfu was beautiful. The mountains and the sea literally just go straight over the sea. It was so blue. It was gorgeous. And then on the way back into London, if you have me on Instagram, you would have already seen the picture that I posted. A lot of people ask me if that actually was my picture. Yes, it was my picture. I took that in the flight deck. I don't know if I was allowed to, so keep it to yourselves. But I took it and... I literally just got into the flight deck as the sun was setting and it was stunning, absolutely beautiful and I couldn't believe that I was able to see it, especially on my first day back. All in all, it was a really, really good flight. I did get a go at doing like, the demo and things like that, so I had a practice of everything, but it was nice to not have a door responsibility for the first day and also getting to sit in the flight deck. It basically was a supernumerary. The universe was really on my side on my first flight back, so thank you very much. But yeah, I had a lovely crew, a lovely IFM, it all worked out really, really well. And I was glad that it was such a long flight as well because the service is the same regardless. If the flight's longer, it just means you've got more time to do it. So I was grateful that it was a long flight and I didn't have to rush to do anything. It was a really perfect first flight back. Everything worked out really well. So I was just really grateful that I'd had such a good first day and so thankful to the crew that I had and so thankful for all of your messages as well. So many people messaged me and said like, good luck on your first day back and I hope it went well. And those messages, like they, they do make me feel really, really good. So thank you so much for anyone that messaged me. But yeah, it was a really, really good first flight back. I was so grateful. People have asked me a few questions, so I'm just gonna like glaze over those really quickly. Was it like riding a bike or starting from scratch? I'd probably say by day two, my Athens, it was like riding a bike. But when I got to that briefing room, I was like, I'm new. I've never been here before. Like that's how it felt. But very quickly, it all just came flooding back. The scariest thing about your first flight back was just the wondering who you were gonna have and what position you would be. I did find that I was worrying about that quite a lot. But the thing is, is that you, you can't do anything about it anyway. So like I'm trying to get into the swing of like knowing what I can control and what I can't control. That I can't control, so there's no point sitting around and worrying about it. But that's probably the scariest thing. Do you think it was more nerve-wracking going back or when you had your first ever flight? Um, no, my first ever flight was terrifying. <laughs> Purely because I didn't even know where I was going. Definitely my first ever flight was still the scariest, but... This, this came in close second. Did you notice any change at work compared to before taking any time off? Yeah, so when I did my packing video, I said that I was looking through some of the notices and one of the notices said that the demo had changed and that's not something that we get trained on again in recurrence, so I did have to practice that. But yeah, that's the only change really. Also, any new destinations? Yes, I'd never flown to Corfu and I'd never flown to Athens. Both new so far. But yeah, that's all of those. Bringing my first flight to a close, it was a really good first flight back. And that was my first two flights. Corfu there and back, straight into an Athens there and back. The day after really knocked me for six, which was yesterday as I'm filming this. I was exhausted yesterday. So, so tired. Lost a nail. I'm in full swing back into crew life again, clearly. Anyway, continuing with the Ross so my next little bit that I've got is a little Euro tour. It's six days worth of short haul. So my first day is I go to Malaga, then back to Heathrow, and then I go to Manchester, a nine stop in Manchester. Get there quite late, but I do have a few hours the following morning, which is nice. So I'll probably just go and get lunch or something, go to the gym, relax, maybe do some editing. I don't know. Got about a three o'clock report time the next day. Fly back from Manchester, back to Heathrow, and then I go to Zurich, stay over in Zurich. Day three is back from Zurich, and then a Charles de Gaulle there and back. Not staying over, so I can't go to Disneyland, but just for there and back. And then I'm back in my own bed that night, which is lovely. Day four is a Stockholm there and 
back. And then after that, I have two available days. I will let you know in the next roster if they did change to anything. I can't imagine they're going to turn into non-op. It'd be really, really nice because... I then have plans to go to Orton Towers for my sister's birthday during my next couple of days off after that. So it'd be nice to have non-op, but yeah, currently two available days. So I will let you know if that changes. And then after that, my only other flight that I've got after that is a Tenerife there and back. That's an early morning report as well. So that's going to be another long day, but a nice one to finish on. And it would be nice to know that it's just one day and then that's it. And then I've got my part-time week off. So really grateful for that. But yeah, a really simple roster full of short haul this month. So yeah, that is my roster. I hope you guys have enjoyed this roster reveal and I hope you guys have enjoyed the extra details from my training course and from my first flight as well. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments or give me a little message on Instagram. I'm always active over there. And get ready for May's roster reveal because hopefully it'll be a little bit more interesting than this one. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Thank you so, so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye!